Hi, I'm Jay, and today I'm going to show you how to install a hard start kit on your central air conditioner. Here's one here. This is the Rector Seal Kickstart KS1, and this is for a 3.5 to 5 ton unit. A warning before we get started. I'm a professional moron operating on a closed course. This is just for information purposes. Don't necessarily do what I do. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm dangerous enough with a screwdriver, or in this case a nut driver, that I can get the job done safely and will be okay. The central air conditioner we're going to be installing this on is a carrier 3.5 ton AC. You'll notice there are two. This one on the right, I've already installed the hard start kit on, so basically I'm doing a mirror image on this unit here. Already we've tested the difference and it's absolutely amazing. As soon as the contactor clicks on on this unit, bam, the compressor's running instantly. This one, there's a short delay. This is going to help, the hard start kit is going to help if your light's really dim when your AC turns on. Um, also, if your regular capacitor in the unit is getting a bit weak, it'll help with that. Or if you have low line voltage, it'll also help. So what we need to do is open up the panel here, which is right here on this unit. So there's a couple of bolts down here and around back. So we're going to take those out and take this panel off. Depending on your AC, it's going to be different, but pretty much it's just getting a, a nut driver and figuring out where the panel is and taking out the appropriate nuts you think, or appropriate bolts you think, are going to be needed to remove the panel. Before you think about doing anything at all, even removing that panel, ensure that you pull the disconnect for the appropriate unit if, of course, you have more than one. Obviously, the left is for the left unit, the right is for the right, so you can follow the wire. It's very simple. In here, you just reach in. There's a little, like, pull thing. You can just pull it right out, and that's what you get right there. Set this aside. A lot of people just put them right on top there, like that. You can close this for the time being, just like that. And this way you know for sure that the power is off and you're not going to get zapped. Also a good idea to turn off your thermostat. Your thermostat is going to send 24 volts to the unit. Really it's just enough to give you a little bit of a buzz, but probably safer if you turn that off if you just so happen to touch the wrong wires. So here is the handiwork on the one that I've already done. There's a relay and also a uh, capacitor here. They're already wired together and you'll notice on the main capacitor of the unit there are two thinner blue wires that are connected there. You need to connect this between the COM and the HERM or the common and hermetic compressor terminals. On this particular capacitor you'll notice in the back there's a brown wire and if I can get you a better shot of that there is no extra terminal on that particular one right there. So don't go by that. We wiped the top of this off and found out exactly which one is the COM and which is the HERM and you just hook up the two blue wires in this kit to those uh, terminals right there, it doesn't matter which way it goes. For the relay, we put a screw in there that we had because they don't supply screws. For the capacitor, they give you a cable tie, as you see, but they do not give you a screw, so we used one that we had, and that's how that mounts in. So now we're going to do the same thing on the other unit. So here's the unit I'm working on, and interestingly enough, on this one, even though they're the exact same unit, the capacitor has these color-coded things so you know where the colored wires go. Uh, that's very convenient. Always, always take a picture if yours is not marked. That way you will know where everything goes back. It's also going to be a little bit easier to put the wires onto the existing capacitor with it dismounted, and I actually have a good reason for doing so. Um, the reason why is conveniently there's all these holes up here and I utilize them but they are not threaded holes so the screws we have 
don't have a tapping feature but it so turns out that the one on this particular unit that holds the capacitor has a self tapper at the end of it so I'm actually going to use that screw to sort of thread these holes and get them the right size so I'm going to mount the capacitor here using its uh, cable tie and I'm going to mount it right in that hole there and I'm going to take out that and screw it in there so it'll cut threads in it. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here's the capacitor and this is the screw I'm going to take out. I'll use a quarter inch nut driver for that. Also a great idea to put a meter on the capacitor just in the event that there's any power there. We've done that off camera. If there's any doubt or any question in your mind, you can use an insulated device that is metal and short the contacts. You may draw a large spark if there's a charge there, and it may mark up your tool, but better than marking you up. So always check for that. We already have by just putting a meter on AC volts and going around to all the terminals and every possible combination. Everything is completely discharged, clear and ready. So now I'm gonna take out this screw here, and this is gonna dismount the capacitor and I'm going to be using this screw. So we're going to just take this out, get the capacitor out of its position here. On this one, the screw likes to just stay in the bracket. There we are. Now I can get the screw out. And I want to show you this up close. If yours does not have this, then you'll have to find another way, like using a drill bit. But you see that little notch in there? And if you look at the end of it, see that cut in it? That's actually going to cut threads right in this hole. So I'll just sort of put it there by hand. Oh, one more time. I just want to get it as straight as possible. Right there is fine. Now I'm going to take the nut driver and just drive that right in. It'll take a little pressure, a little force, and it may be hard to turn, but it's once and done. So we're going to run that right through. The screws that we have, which we just found in a, you know, everybody's got little screws and things laying around in a junk drawer or something like that, happen to have the same exact thread and are the same size as this. So now I can take that out and my screw we'll be able to go in there. So we'll take that back out and I'm going to set this aside because I'm going to use it for another hole to sort of ream that out or drill that out if you will. Here's the cable tie. Although it's curled in this way, it goes in like that. I'm going to install it. You, you know, you'd normally think, well, this looks right here, so I'll put the screw in through that. You don't want it that way. You want to mount it backwards actually. This is just a Phillips screw. Again, it's something that we had laying around. So we're gonna put that into place. It should actually start in there. It does. And I'm just gonna screw that down, not even tight, because I want the cable tie to just be able to move around, just like that. All right, so we have the cable tie in place for the capacitor. Now we're gonna find another appropriate hole and sort of drill that out with the capacitor screw. All right, here's the kit here. You have a capacitor and a relay, and although it's still kind of bundled up, two wires. That's it. Mount up these two items, connect up two wires, that's the whole installation. So what I've done off camera is I found the appropriate mounting hole for the relay, and I've used that same original capacitor screw to sort of drill that out and tap it so the screws that we have are going to fit. So now I'll show you installing this, and then of course we'll install the capacitor, hook everything up, and all that good stuff. I've just put the relay in place, the hole I already tapped out, put the screw. Once again, just barely, barely tight. Just so it's not going to fall out. It can be all floppy, but I like to just get it a little bit more somewhere about like that. This way it'll swing in the breeze and all that kind of good stuff. Now we're going to mount the capacitor up. So this is going to go this way, wrap around. It's just that it's bent the other way. 
wrap around and go through that little slot there. This bends out. So this tab is going to stick out the back there and you can grab that with a uh, needle nose plier or any other pair of pliers and pull it tight. So like I said it's going to go this way and we're going to be mounting the capacitor in that. So let me just get this straight in, straightened out. This is exactly how I want it. So now what I can do is with the capacitor out of the way I can start the cable tie. See how it goes just like that? And I can now slip the capacitor in as such. This I can grab by hand and we're going to go ahead and just loosely for now. We're going to tighten it up everything a lot better later on. So now that we have that, just for OCD's sake, what we're going to do is pull that out just to get it out of the way. I'm going to make this as straight as possible and tighten that. Just so it's a nice, neat, professional installation. Remember, your AC guy will just put this any old way. It's just, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and it's done. It'll work for you, but that's really it. So, you know, if you can take the time to make things look nice, that way, if you do ever have to call your AC guy, he's going to say, wow, who did this? <laughs> Obviously not you. All right, now we're just going to feed the wire through where it's nice. We'll grab that. On this one, blue and yellow are calm and Herm. Yours may be different. Check it first. Read the labels. You may see it's marked Herm over here, Fan over there, and Calm over there. So we're going to take this now, and it's just a simple push-on terminal. And this also makes it real nice with the capacitor dismounted, so we can just get that on. And you're just going to wiggle it on all the way, just like that. So there's one wire. The other wire we'll take, I'm going to put it right through the same area again to make it nice and I'll put that on the other one. I'll just wiggle that. Again it doesn't matter which way these blue wires go on. That's it. That's in. So now we have to mount the two capacitors back up and we're done. That's all there is to it. So now I'm sure of everything. I'm going to pull this as tight as I can, which is right there. That's as far as it's going to go. That can just stay there. You can snip it off if you want. It doesn't really matter. And now, just sort of bend it out of the way to get to the screw. Out the cable tie straight. The capacitor is going to sag a little bit because of it just being on a cable tie. And you can just sort of wiggle it till it's good. So everything is now mounted. The wires are connected. We just have one more screw to put back in and then put the panel back. Okay, we got the screw in for the original capacitor. Holding that in place. Again, so it's nice and straight. And drive it right home. Let's see. Just get it as straight as possible. Nice and tight. There we go. Now we're just going to dress up these wires here a little bit, you know, because this is sticking out. Just dress it up nice a little bit. Stick the wires down in and all that stuff. We'll play with it and put the uh, cover back on and then we'll give it a start up. We're going to now reinstall the disconnect. It goes in so the on is facing up because otherwise it says no. Open the panel. Lock it in there, in the right orientation, pops right in just like that, and we're all set. Close the panel, all set. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn the unit on. Absolutely beautiful. You heard the click of the contactor and immediately the compressor noise. So smooth, butter smooth, 
and these did not really have a hard time starting as they were. These units are only about four or five years old. One of the main reasons this was done is because this house has a natural gas standby generator and there's only so much wattage that those can put out. Unlike the utility power that's got full chooch on it all the time, the generator, the engine in that has to rev up. Just like if you're driving a car and you come up to a hill, if you don't change your foot on the gas pedal, the car is gonna struggle to get up that hill. It's gonna downshift and just try its best if it's a big hill like that, you have to step on the gas a little bit more to rev the engine up, and that's exactly what a standby generator is gonna do. When it senses a load, such as when the AC turns on, it says, whoa, we got a huge power draw, smash that gas. So it needs a moment to get up to speed right there. And with the hard start kits, now it's not gonna need as much throttle on there. Make it a lot easier on the generator, and also just for on plain old utility power as well. So there you go, a successful installation. Two wires, two screws, no trouble. Very simple to do. And yes, if you're a homeowner, you can do this too, because that's all I am. Thanks for watching. If you thought this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you click the like and subscribe buttons. That lets me know I did a good job making this video and I can continue to provide them for you. Have a great day.